big lunch. Well, here he is, my dear. Oh. I'll give him to you to look at. What a beautiful doll. I just need a boy in my house. <laughs> to give him a name, then. <laughs> no. So, handsome. I might call him handsome. Oh. <laughs> city. At least that's what I'd always believed. Hello, Mirka. Yes. It's Tim McCartney Snape here. <laughs> it's lovely to hear your voice. Where are you ringing from? I'm ringing from Sydney. Are well, you not climbing a mountain somewhere then? No, no, it's not from Kathmandu. Oh. I do, I do spend a little time in my office. Have you recovered from the trip? Very slowly. How's the painting going? Have you started it yet? I think it's going to be much more difficult than I thought. I've just started it yesterday. of Kosciuszko. For years, she tried to persuade me to visit her there. But how could I go when there seemed so much to keep me in the city? Then last winter, I discovered a wonderful book of old paintings by Eugène van Gerhard. Finally, I felt it was time to go. why I wanted to stay up here all the time instead of just visiting. Oh, 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 this is a very big mountain, you see. They're the one that scare me. But I, I think I know why they scare me. Because I, they put me in a dilemma. Suddenly your imagination is going wild. And then you don't know if you're on this beautiful earth or if you're on another planet. It's just so magical out there. You never want to come home. Are there marigolds uh, at the bottom? No, these are, these are billy buttons. Oh, we'll billy buttons. Them, some people call them bachelor balls. Oh. <laughs> and they're lovely bright yellow pom-poms on tall Ooh. stems. Um, Annalise, you are a true artist of the mountain. You can even translate it into your lovely wool and your very funny needle. I don't Annalise. know, but I love the mountain. Yes. Uh, I don't think I could do anything like this that wasn't of the mountain. The mountains are extraordinary. The mountains are so constant. People come, people go, they change. Sometimes they're unreliable. The mountains are always there. They're, they're always changing. But there's a constancy, a peace. It satisfies something, I'm not sure what. I wonder how I could ever go out into these mountains. I think you could. I've heard that Tim McCartney Snape is in the area. He was with the group that climbed Everest. When Annalise told me about this mysterious man of Everest who could take me into the mountains, I felt she was weaving a magic spell from which I could not escape.
Almost before I knew it, we were on our way. My skis felt bewitched, as if they were carrying me into the mountains all by themselves. Never before had I skied so far from comfort and safety. Tim said we'd be out for several days, in the highest part of Australia. I had butterfly in my tummy, but I wasn't afraid. Being with someone who had climbed Mount Everest made me feel very secure. Tim had brought a Sherpa friend with us. His name was Mingma, and he'd been on some of Tim's climbs in Nepal. With fellow travelers like that, who could have fear? I can't do you the same miles as Ensam. I've got nice... Yeah, I should. Why can't I? Now, a mountaineer is a serious man, but they have a serious face. So shorts that are, that are smiling, aren't they? They really are smiling, these shorts. Team, I have put the mountain in your glasses. I know they are in your brain and your body, but now they are inside your glasses. the sound I had forgotten. That's sad, isn't it? Quite cold, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, the yeah. oh, I haven't had a picture. <laughs> <laughs> you comfortable? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the river, we had really left the other world behind. By now, we may as well be in paradise. Life is an adventure. <laughs> That's one of the first things Tim said to me. I could tell there would be many joys for me on this trip. I'd never even slept in a tent before. Oh, the wind is very cool now this time of the night. Cool, yes, it can get a lot cooler too. <laughs> will I, will it? Oh, I'm ready for it. I got, I got wool, I got everything. Yes, these oh, mountains are very benign yeah. sometimes, yes. but they can get really yes. uh, quite fierce. I can't wait to, yeah. to make myself a little yeah. home in the, in the tent. Oh, it's a really good feeling, I yes. think. You can feel very <laughs> snug. Snug as a bag. <laughs> Aren't your hands cold, Mimi? <laughs> yeah, you have no blood. Huh? <laughs> You've got sherpa blood. <laughs> yes. Did, did, uh, did Minga eat any llamas when he was a little boy? <laughs> you should have seen that lovely little house Tim and Mingma made for me. Oh, a doll like you would have loved to be in there with me. It was so nice. Yeah, you would think that this looks like a Peter waiting for the sun to come out. And these are the little legs. This is a great moment coming into the tent, isn't it? Wonderful. Like some shelter. Yes, I've, yes, but I'm coming in my shelter. You want us to hand you your things? Yes, I'm going to take your bag for you. Because I've got things that I need for no arm at all. So you'll find her that, that teddy bear. Teddy, teddy, teddy bear? bear, yeah, yeah. teddy bear, we'll talk. <laughs> yeah. 
Then in my plastic bag, I've got something else, another animal. Good boy. It goes with me everywhere. It's all in the plastic bag, in there. I've got a little animal, and I've got a big snake skin. See, I always travel with him. It's a very big snake skin. Big monster. It goes in my... He goes in my tent. He's a big boy. No, that's not. I sleep with him, you see. Mm. I think I have my little doll in there. In there. It's no doll. That's right. That's it. Oh, this is lovely. Now I'm at home. Mm -hmm. That first evening was very special. I loved the feeling of privacy in my own little tent. But it was also good to know that Tim and Nima were near. I wrote in my diary that I had fared well and felt as though I was living in a beautiful dream. I often talk to my little friend, and that's good for my brain. You have to feed your subconscious as you would feed a beautiful garden. Well, Mirka, do you think it was worth it today? Well, it was an odd place to find myself, being a city girl, but I yeah, wouldn't I have missed so. it for anything in the world. The beauty of it and the tumblers. Mingma, did you see me? Did you see me tumble? Oh yeah. Yeah? yeah. Was that funny? Oh, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even if I have so muscles now, it's worth it. Yes, actually, yeah, for me it's been made it all much more worthwhile being able to take you up there because that's really what uh, this place is all about. A lot of people don't go there. <laughs> So I was very a unique privileged, experience. Yes, that's very right. privileged to have you taking me to up to paradise. Well. I didn't need to understand the words of Mingma's beautiful song. The tune from his homeland carried me far away into other worlds of ice and snow. That night, I felt the mountains calling me. I could feel myself slowly turning into a spirit of the snows. The mountains were staring at me. 
last day at back at them. This is how one falls in love. It was so lovely to see the plants emerging from the snow. What courage they must have to survive. They clustered together so nicely. I wanted to hold them all the time. It's good to talk to things too. You give life to everything around you. And that's what you should do. Because everything is so extraordinary. I'm sure deep down, Tim feels the same way. Tim had much to show us. He traveled on his skis as if they were fish, sweeping over a frozen sea. There is no skiing in Nepal, and Mingma was still learning many things from Tim. Well, the, right? the hardest thing for me was all the mountain clothes. I felt as though I was inside another body. I would have loved to be dressed all in white chiffon so I could disappear into the snow. I think these are my favourite mountains, really. They're, obviously, it's not like the Himalayas, where the mountain, the scale is just far, far greater than here. But even so, these mountains are big enough for to, to make you feel very humble. Still, the, the top of these mountains touch the sky like Mount Everest touched the sky. So if you don't know how deep they go down, you think <laughs> you might be in Mount Everest. Yes, exactly, yes. <laughs> yes. Although you, you're not looking out on... Uh, on hundreds of, of lesser peaks. Here, here you're looking out into a very dry continent and I think that makes these mountains more outstanding because it's such a contrast between up here and down on the, on the plains. Mm. I enjoy coming up with people who have never been before because you tend to forget what it's, what it's like the first time you come here and that's always the most magical moment I think. I feel very envious of you actually coming yeah. up here for the first time. Yeah. But you see, in life, everything should be the first time. That's the secret of happiness. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but now the mountains are very familiar to me. You know, I can ski around them without uh, worrying about getting lost or anything like that. Yes. Can you ski in the night? You can. Okay. It's uh, Actually, skiing in the night is, is, is good because it removes um, certain senses and, and uh, leaves more up to your imagination. Fully. It can make you quite frightened. Oh. <laughs> Which is a good feeling, actually. Yes. Uh, Tim, do you think we're going towards the blizzard? I don't think so. No blizzard today? No. Everything was an experience not to be missed. A painter must be very clear and brave to capture a landscape. Sometimes I thought of my studio, far, far away. I wondered what I would make of all this when I returned. This is very odd, painting water when there's so much snow about. So very strange. Oh, all the water going through the tunnel. All my pebbles are so big. That's because I'm an optimist.
right, Mirka. <laughs> Would you like a visitor? Come in, make yourself at home. No, it's easy to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Not the snow of the boots. Oh, sorry. I have bad habits. <laughs> I should have put a doormat out. Yeah. What are you doing there? I saw you oh, a little a noise. little puzzle of Mingma's. Oh, Mingma. I'll give you a go later. I have a surprise for you. Have you? Mm. Bon girl. That looks like up here. It is. See, see, man. I have this beautiful picture in my studio, always, because I'm a frustrated painter. I dream to paint the landscape. But you have to live in the landscape to, to paint it. And that painting shows me that I could paint the landscape because Eugene von Guerra captures the far away and the very close to you. Yes, he's got a good good sense of emptiness there. And I like the rocks too. He's, he's uh, conveyed them really well, hasn't he? Very, very beautiful. Great one. light. Do you, think, do you think it would be possible to go that close or... Yes. A place like that. <laughs> yes, why not? We're here. Yeah, magic. We'll, we'll, we'll climb a ridge top yes. later on. I'll show you. Well, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Brave and ready. Imagine coming up here a hundred years ago. Yes, what courage. What passion to discover a beautiful landscape. Oh, oh. Yeah, I think this is, a, this is about the place. Von Guerra would tip his head to me. These mountains were truly a place of wonder. I wonder who it could be. I wonder who that could be. Ooh. Hello. Hello, Mirka. Hello, Mirka. It's Annalise here. Oh, Annalise, what a lovely surprise to hear your voice. How is it down there? You won't believe it, but I'm just painting the mountain. You're just painting? Oh, marvellous. How's, how's it going? Well, it is not easy to catch the soul of the mountain. And all the different colors of the snow are so hard to catch. How does the mountain look today? Well, of course, it's very, very different now. It's beautiful. And the hills look very green, and the trees look deep green, and the, the glistening in the wind as the wind goes through the leaves. The flowers have been beautiful. on this painting, the more memories come back. Um, that's a radio tracking antenna. An antenna? I, is, what are you doing with the antenna, I wonder? <laughs> I'm looking for pygmy possums. Pygmy possums? How could someone find any so 
sort of animal with such a you mysterious device. Like ordinary possums live in trees, but these ones live in the boulder fields, and in the winter the, the boulders are covered in snow. Mm, so I, I'm looking under what, the snow. Are you, but how can you look under the snow? What, what? Well, what I do is I put a, a collar around their necks with a um, radio transmitter on it, mm. and it gives out a signal that I can pick up on this. Mm, this little, looks, looks like a TV, a radio. <laughs> it, it's a radio antenna. I can show you if yes. you like. I think the possum. That's from the transmitter on the possum. Oh. And if I turn the antenna, we can find out where the possum is. Oh, could we? So we do radio receiver, you know where the little possum's on. Yes, it's a directional antenna. And if I point out here where the possum is, the sound is really loud. Yes. If I turn it away, you can't hear the sound as loud. Oh, that's And good. I catch them again when the snow melts and take oh. the collar off. Can you hold them in your hand? Yes, oh, they're only small. tiny. They're only about that oh, big. Oh, that's beautiful. I wish I could see one. My mind went on another journey. I was plunging into a world beneath the snow. Tim had told me about Aborigines who came to the mountains thousands of years ago. They feasted on insects which swarmed in the caves and crevices. I felt I could turn a corner at any moment and find those people huddling over their cooking fires. I wondered what lived in those underground passages, while glaciers were shaping the world above. beginning to lose track of the days. Nature was playing with all my senses and all memories were awakening. I remember the snowy night in France and my father telling me a story. He said there was a snow goblin who lived at the top of a mountain. One day it fell and as it tumbled down, the snow began to cling to its body. It gathered more and more snow. By the time it reached the bottom, it had become a giant snowman. When spring came, the snowman melted and turned into a beautiful creek. And that's how it stayed forever. <laughs> Hi, Mirka. Hello. Oh, well done. How's it going? Not too bad. Eh? It's just I'm sitting on an ant hill. I think all the ants are going right to my. The, the ah. ants are going through my paint and my drawing. Through your, through your paint? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's going on. Not too bad. Quickly. Not too bad. How did you go on the mountain up there? Uh, it's getting a bit slushy, but it's good fun. It looks very high to me. I don't think I could go that high yet. <laughs> oh, well, we'll get you up there yes. later, I hope. Yes. Great view. Yes. Do you have a tumble? Yeah. Do you have a tumble? Yes. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> Colder wind up there. When you're coming down, the wind whistles through your ears.
Uh, Can't wait to see the daylight come through the snow tomorrow morning. Will we see the daylight oh, through the snow? Oh, it's beautiful, yes. You, you'll see the starlight through the snow as it gets darker. Yeah. You know, when I was a little girl in France, I was terrified of mountains. Until, until now, really, because in France you were told that the big eagles always took away the little children in their lair. Oh, I've read fairy tales like yes. that. You know, I'm not a reasonable woman. I think I told you that before. <laughs> I love gruesome death stories. You must know a lot of them. Actually, near here, uh, about four years ago, I nearly lost someone. And it was in a blizzard. And it was a bad blizzard because it was raining, not snowing. Very, very wet and cold. And uh, we lost someone for about half the night. But they were very sensible. They managed to dig themselves a little mm. snow cave. and. Um, we found them in the snow cave about two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. during a howling gale. I was really wor very, very worried. You couldn't hear their voices? No, no, you couldn't hear about anything above the wind. Mima says it's not like this in Nepal. It's much more dangerous there. Oh, yeah, it's really? much more dangerous. Yeah. Also, he says people who don't have any experience to go up to go places. Up. Oh. Go up to places that um, where avalanches always yeah. occur. But, uh, that's a very rare occasion here. Oh, yeah. That's what I like about these yeah. mountains. Is, is not, there aren't things like crevasses and avalanches yeah, they are gentle, in most places. Yeah. gentle mountains. Yeah. Still, you have to respect them, though. I think so, yes. Because I also I feel secure because you and Mingo are there. But I'm not, I, mean, <laughs> I think I'm getting too friendly. I think I'm getting too friendly with mountains. Can you be too friendly with the mountains? Yeah, you can. You can be... As friendly as you like, as long as you're, you're aware that uh, there is a danger there. There came a terrible tempest. I was all wrapped up in case my train flew away. The blizzard took me back to the war in France when you heard the sirens wailing and you had to be ready to go down into the cellar. But here, there was nowhere to go. That's stunning. There was nowhere to go. I imagine us trying to ski anywhere in that storm. But the idea made me feel a bit lost. very game to try and catch and sketch your visage but you know your, your profile makes me think of a beautiful painter called Filippo Lippi and also in your eyes I can see that you went to Mount Everest you mean I've, my, my skin's all beaten up by the weather no you have magic in the eyes maybe the mountains have sculpted your face perhaps it certainly does, it does have an effect on you. Yes. The sun. The sun and the wind. The wind. And then the, the majesty, the, the view, you know? Well, I wonder what comes first. Whether the, uh, the mountains sculpt you or you, you're that way to start with. And that's why you go to the mountains. I know it is your very private feeling, but what did, what, what did you feel when you went right on top of Mount Everest? Well, actually, I, I think the initial feeling was one of tremendous relief <laughs> because it was so difficult getting up there and after all the hard work, suddenly it, it was over. There was no, no, no place higher to go. It was a very, very vivid 20 minutes we spent there because at sunset and the clouds were filling the valleys and all the peaks surrounding Everest were 
pink and gold. The colours just seem to shine. It's a uh, very unusual memory because it's so, so vivid, even after mm. two years. See, I have been a bit of a coward. I, I have kept in reserve the, the time to go to the mountain. <laughs> Until now, <laughs> I don't dare too much beauty at a time. You, you could die. <laughs> or you could or you could walk on clouds forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you feel a pure man? You feel pure. Well, it's you, d you do feel pure at times in the mountains mm. because there's no uh, complications in your life. That's the great thing about wilderness, I suppose. If I couldn't, for some reason, come to places like this, life would be very much the poorer. was beginning to feel like a creature of the mountain, like an abominable snow woman. I thought I would feel so strange when I returned to the city. There, you're like a bird with its wings clipped. You don't feel a lot of things. And yet, I do love the city as well. Many things became clearer up there. I recalled how Van Gerard had said, painters must not just paint what they see before them. They must also paint what they see inside themselves. The mountains were helping me to rediscover that. Yeah, you're not smiling enough, Mr. Angel. So I have to try and make you smile. Maybe you're too cold. I can see how to catch your soul. The same as I'm trying to catch the soul of the mountain. Bit of trouble here. Yeah. Drops of sky on the edge. Drops of sky on the edge. Well, he's in some. Pompon's still asleep. <laughs> Wait till you go back to the to the city. Then then you'll uh, take some getting used to that too. Again. <laughs> you see, I think the the big building in the city. I always think they are mountains in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're full of people. Full of These aren't. I see what you see. <laughs> It'd be actually very nice if we, we could get you up right on top, but, um, well, it's a bit difficult for a beginner, I think. Yes. Yeah. But, oh, I've got an idea, I might. I'll see. Really? <laughs> a surprise. Be, 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 be good. <laughs> we'll wait for you. Okay, bye bye. Bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> I felt like a child at Christmas. Tim said he would return with my surprise as soon as he could. It was going to be a long wait.
Rebecca, here's your magic carpet. Late. I can't believe it. It's so little and so pretty. Who will I sit in it? Well, have a try. Oh, oh lovely. <laughs> you got to sit right, right down okay. there with your back against the back. Wonderful. <laughs> you can't get ways to get in the tennis. It's nice. I'm afraid I'm going to be the reindeer. This will get you to places you never dreamed of, America. I think it's already fits it? me. It fits me perfectly, like a glove. Yeah, does it? Ooh, this no. is the stuff <laughs> dreams are made of. <laughs> You are a magician. Mm -hmm. Oh, T, would you would you know the name of that mountain? It's Watson's Crag. Oh, Watson's Crag. Yeah. Do you think one could ski on this mountain? Oh, that's my favourite skiing place. Is that so? It yeah. looks very difficult to me. It's got lots of peaks oh, and crevasses. Fantastic skiing. Is that so? Yeah, yeah. the best. You would fly away then. You would fly from one cliff to another. Oh, you jump. Fly all the way down. I have no idea how many mountains there is for me. I'm trying to calm them. I, I, I keep thinking of Tom Thumb who, who stole the boots of the big ogre and jumped from <laughs> one mountain to another. <laughs> it, it almost seems possible when you look at the magic it magic landscape. Yeah. yeah, it does. I was left alone with my thoughts. So the magic days were coming to an end. The team wanted one final ski down those beautiful slopes. They shone in the sun as they still shine in my mind. With Steam and Ming Ma's help, a part of me had been reborn. Maybe we all crave for the wilderness, even when we think we've forgotten it.
little plane. I would carry their images with me forever.